So Cryptococcus gadii is a yeast. It's a yeast that's closely related to mushrooms. So it's more, more related to mushrooms than the yeast that we're used to, baker's yeast or brewer's yeast that we put in bread or we put in beer. This yeast lives in the environment, um, specifically in trees, in, in tree hollows, and the soil around trees. It infects people when people move into the area around those trees or they dig inside them and it gets into the air and they breathe it into their lungs. In most people, it doesn't do anything at all and they never notice that they've ingested the yeast or they've breathed it in. In some people, and we don't know why, it causes a very devastating disease which can go from either a pneumonia or a meningoencephalitis, which is an infection in, in the brain and in the spinal fluid. And it can be a devastating infection. You don't catch it from another person. It doesn't really grow in us. It, it's, it's deep inside. When it causes an infection, it's either deep in the lungs. And when you cough it up, it's too big to go into someone else's lungs. When we breathe it in, it's the spores that we're breathing in. And they're very small. Or a desiccated yeast that's very small. When it's in the body, it tends to get a lot bigger, and so it's very difficult to transfer from person to person, even if you're coughing right on them. And I'm actually going to start with a closely related species called Cryptococcus neoformans. That's a sister species. We've known about Cryptococcus neoformans for about 100 years as an infectious agent. In about the 1940s, we noticed that Cryptococcus neoformans actually had four serotypes. And by serotypes, I mean four different things that were recognized independently by our immune systems. So they're seen by the body as being four different things, and they were labeled Cryptococcus neoformans A, B, C, and D. Over the years, we started to see other biological differences. Um, places they grew, things they grew on, sugars that they liked to eat. And we started to realize that we actually had two different species. And so serotypes A and D stayed as Cryptococcus neoformans, and serotypes B and C became Cryptococcus gadii. Well, now that we look at Cryptococcus gadii, we've actually discovered that it's not one species either, but a set of species called a species complex. And there are at least four different species in this Cryptococcus gadii species complex. There's one species that lives in California. That's now called Cryptococcus bacillus sporus. There's the one that's up in the British Columbia. That's Cryptococcus deuterogadii. And then there's the one that's in the southeastern United States, that's the original Cryptococcus gadii. So it didn't actually move. It's been there for a very long time. And what we think happened, if we think back about 100 years or so, we, we try to think what happened 100 years or so ago when this thing moved from where we knew it used to live down in the Amazon basin to where we find it now up in British Columbia. We know it came from the Amazon because that's where all its closest neighbors are. When we do whole genome sequencing, we find that the ones that are most closely related to the Pacific Northwest are down in the Amazon basin. And we know there was a lot of movement back then because that's right around when the Panama Canal opened. And there was a lot of movement of lumber. And we know Cryptococcus gadii is associated with trees. And there was a lot of just movements of ships in general. And ships carry bilge water. They fill up with water where they stop. They go to where they're going. They empty out the bilge water. And we know that Cryptococcus gadii survives very well in seawater. And we can isolate it from seawater. So we speculate that perhaps all this movement between the Amazon basin 100 years ago and the Pacific Northwest allowed it to travel from down in Brazil up there very recently.